This is the Ego Zero Turn Mower. Woo! All right, so today's an exciting day. I am on my way to Ace Hardware where I purchased a Ego Zero Turn mower. I was not one of the uh, famous influencers to get one for free, so I am going to purchase one with my hard-earned money, and we're gonna check it out uh, because now that I live uh, at the new house with the new shop, I have two acres, and the Ego push mower isn't gonna cut it, so I needed a zero turn, and they came out with that thing. Perfect timing for buying the house. So, so we're gonna go pick it up, uh, I told them not to uncrate it because they were going to put it together for me. So we're going to see what it looks like as it comes in in a crate. So if you guys pick it up and it's in a crate, we'll get to see what that looks like. So, all right, so we're pulling up to Ace. We're going to see what we can find out here. See if we can find it. We're in the back because it's in a metal crate. So we're going to pull up. And I think it's right here, this metal crate right here. It's kind of a frame. That looks like it. So. Let's see what we can uh, figure out. In case you're in the local area next to where I live in Searcy, uh, check out Homer's Ace Hardware. That's where I picked it up. They're a locally owned business, so if you want to support a small family, check them out. And we're going to go load it in the trailer. All right, we're going to just snap off all the uh, zip ties that are holding down. Guess what it is. This is the 42 inch Eco Zero Turn, the first one. This is basically the entire mower. It's all in here. Uh, we got to put the seat on it, it looks like. Or probably the handles. And then we'll get the batteries out. Looks like they put the battery and everything down below. It's got a quick charger that charges in an hour. So uh, I'm going to take off the metal frame, basically the crate they shipped it on. We'll undo all that, and then we can get this uh, out and uh, set it up. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is grab these batteries out. This comes with uh, four 10 amp hour batteries. These are the upgraded version. It's a little different than my other ones. These are the biggest ones I've made so far. And they are they are massive. This is a 10 amp. See, got the 10 amp here. And they have upgraded this circle here to where it shows the quadrants of how much power is actually left in here. The other batteries just had one green and then the whole thing would turn yellow and then it would turn red. So this is really nice to know how much is in these. Looks like I'm going to have to charge the battery before first use. So I think I have to do that while it's actually in the uh, mower. The other thing we have down here is the wall chart. This is the 1600 uh, watt charger that goes to your wall. This should charge all the batteries within an hour. That's a pretty quick charge. This is kind of like a Tesla uh, car. You'd still need the wall charger to charge. So this is what it looks like. And it's fairly large for what it is. It's a pretty big battery pack like so. And we got one that goes in the wall and the other one We've got this funky looking charger that will plug into the unit itself. Looks like we have some mountable uh, thing on the back. We'll take a look at that later. All right, we're going to take a look at this box up here that was on the seat. This says open first, contents required for assembly. So we have 
What we have in this box, we have all the tools. Kind of have a Spanish uncrating, which I can't read. Here's the English uncrating, how to get everything out. The very thick uh, mower assembly. What do we have here? This may be the attachment for the water hose to where it'll clean the deck alone. We'll see. This is the key to turn on the mower. They give you two. Underneath we have, oh, that's nice. The wrenches and uh, bolts we'll need. Down key. I just fell out the hole. And I think that's probably the only thing that's in that. All right, so up front we have the chair. We'll come assemble. It is, wow, really, really stinky. What's nice about the chair? It's got little armrests, which is pretty cool. So it's an air ride seat. So we'll have to attach that when we get the thing off. All right, inside, underneath the chair, that's the uh, right and left arms. I'm gonna keep them in the box so I don't get them wrong. And then underneath that, take all this off. They just cover up the plastic with some cardboard and that's where your feet will go. And that's pretty much all the parts to it. So we're just gonna unbolt the wheels, straps that are holding it down, get it off here and then bolt on these few pieces and then I guess we're gonna have to charge it first and then I'm gonna go out and ride it around and cut. All right, so we got it down. We're gonna put the seat down like this first and then we're gonna get the wire to the seat that's kind of down here and we're gonna attach it to this. It's the safety for the seat. Just attaches like that. All right, we got uh, two bolt connections here. Put them in like that. We'll attach the bolts on the front here first, and then we'll get to the back. It's a little hard because these want to slide when you grab this thing to adjust the seat. So we'll attach those first. And that's the seat. The only thing left we have is the handles right here. All right, so sitting down, I realized that this is a bouncy chair. Uh, it's got uh, suspension in the chair, which is going to be really nice for my back uh, when I drive over a bouncy yard. Now we're going to put these arms onto the uh, handles and we're going to put them on the outside. There are four adjustable holes, so we have three positions up and down we can do it. I've decided to go at the highest point. So what we're going to do is bring it in like this and then we're going to grab the uh, the bolts with the washer base on it, and we're just gonna attach one to the very top. And then at the bottom, we have a little bit of an adjustment to go back and forth. So we're going to leave them just a tad bit loose. So that way, both sides are perfectly adjusted to each other. I'm just gonna do this by hand for now. Okay, what I have now is I have one that's maybe a little too tight, but I've gotten this one pretty tight. And now I want these two to be uh, in sync. So if I push them all the way forward, pull them all the way back, I want them to be aligned together. So I'm gonna leave it right in the center. I'm gonna make sure they line up kind of together, one's not farther forward than the other, and it looks to be about there. So I'll tighten these down all the way down. And that should get us aligned the same. So when I go all the way forward, they are together, and all the way back, they are together, and we're not out of sync either side. Uh, again, that's an adjustment we can make later on after we start running. But from all I can tell, we are complete with assembling, so it was really easy to assemble. Literally 16 bolts. So now we're going to check out the power supply. All right, so here is the main power. So we lift in the, from the open me. It's got a lid. Let's take that plastic off. And you can see we have the PowerPeak technology 
We have six spots for batteries. And what's really nice, we have like the hydraulic hinge here, so it holds it up. Six spots for batteries. So we're gonna take the four batteries it came with, and we're gonna slide them right in here. So that's two. And here is four. They tell me, well, they tell everyone, four batteries, four 10 amps should do two acres, and I have literally two acres. So we're set up here. Now we got to plug it in and charge the batteries because if I hit each button, they are on 1%. So let's check out the charger. All right, so I'm just gonna set this down for now. We're gonna plug in the charger on the ground. Later on, I'll plug it into the wall. You can see we have charging power now. I think I heard a fan spin up in there. We're gonna take the fancy special end we're gonna go into where it has the battery signal, flick it up, and then we'll plug it right in like that. We'll see if anything happens. This just clicked on. We have, looks like charging is happening. And if we look at the back of the batteries, we can see one is blinking on all of them. So there is charging happening. All right, so over here we have the control panel. This is for a phone and it's spring loaded. So when you slide your phone in there, it stays nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. So if you have the old style phone and you want to plug in a wired headphone, you're good to go. And uh, if you don't, it's beautiful. Um, it's charging right now. I don't have the key in, but you can see kind of the start stop button is lit up. We have the gear lit up. Um, this is your interface pad. We're gonna go ahead and rip off that. And that is a really sweet feature. We are at 21% charged right now. I did not realize that was gonna happen, but that is super nice. The LCD screen is really bright, easy to read, high quality. I don't know if it's gonna do anything while we're charging. I don't think it is. Uh, this is the key to turn it on. They give you two of them. It just slides into the slot. I don't know if there's a forward and backwards. Just looks like either way will work. This is gonna be turning the blade off or on. Pushed in like that is the blade off. Pulled up is gonna be turning the blade on. Then we have right here, this is going to raise and lower the blade. And this is just a simple push in raise it to the desired height and bring it back over. Um, at my feet right here, you can see a power meter. This is gonna light up and tell me how much power I have left during the cut. So it's basically like your uh, fuel meter. We have the parking brake over here. Works just like a car parking brake, which is really nice. Um, then in my center here, I have the normal chair adjustment. All right, so we have the position for our feet and we can get really, really close or really, really far away where I can't reach. So I'll be somewhere in the center. And then we have a dial right here. Twisting it to the right makes the seat bounce more firm. It's really soft right now, I think. So we're gonna go much more firm. That's pretty good. It tells us everything down here what we need to do, uh, left, right, forward, backwards, we forget the parking brake. That's everything right here. Let's take a look at the left side console. Left side console, we have our bigger cup holder and our smaller cup holder, and then inside here, we flick it up. Inside, we have our USB charging. Right here, we have a USB, it'll charge, and then if we wanted to, we can set our phone down and it'll store in there, and then we can just close it up and not lose it. It's a magnet, so it holds it tight without a plastic piece that could snap and open and get lost. So that's that side. All right, so this little piece that came with it, this will snap onto here. It's a quick connect, and you attach your water hose to this side, and when you turn on the water hose, it'll clean the blade underneath. And when you're done, you just quick connect off, and this is a metal deck. Everything else is pretty much plastic, but the metal deck will be washed off without damage to the electronics. And we're gonna hit the start button. 
If you tap it once, it'll show you just the power and if the key is plugged in or not. See the key is flashing? It's not plugged in. Key's in. If you hold it down, you hear a beep, everything lights up. We can see what we have. It's showing us 36, 35%. Uh, we have a big light bar here knowing we're ready to cut. Down at my feet, we have the power meter is lit up and it's telling me I have two to go, which is a really nice feature because when you're looking forward, you're always looking down at your feet area when you're cutting, which is really nice. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the battery compartments. I have one, two, three, and four actually have batteries. Five and six do not. I have other batteries for my other Ego products, so I'm going to put them in five and six. We are in standard mode. Now we're in sport mode. Now we're in control mode. We're back to standard. I don't know what these do yet. We'll find out as we go. Um, so we have fast and slow. If we can speed up how fast we drive, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, the right side is how fast the blades spin. I believe that's a blade icon. We have how many hours we put on this. We're in charge, eco, and power. Our USB, if we are plugging anything, I believe that'll light up. If we push this button, we can kind of see, I can see now that my LED lights on the front are lit up. You can see we have, if we're gonna do any night mowing, we have a nice amount of LEDs. We have them on the fronts and we have two up on the sides near me. It also shows us that they're on from the display. Again, on your seat, we have the arm press if you don't want them or if you do want them. This one kind of gets in the way of the display for me. If I had it scooted back, maybe to here, uh, I can see the whole display, but I'm really short in the leg, so I'm going to be up close to be able to get to it. Uh, I believe that's it because this icon is doing nothing. So we're going to raise the garage door and I'm going to take this thing out. We'll see how it goes. All right, we're outside. All I do is pull it in. I have it on just standard mode and all I have is the machine turned on. It does show me the icons on the screen are really interesting. Come in and take a look at these. The icons show that the parking brake is on. You can see the parking brake icon, hopefully without the glare, if you can see. Mm -hmm. If I take the parking brake off, you can see that's off. You also see this icon, which is the arms. If I open them up, it's gone. When I close the arms, all right, I'm ready to go. We're not going to cut anything yet because I'm just ready to cruise. So let's take a look and listen, and see how it goes. This is full power right now. This is full power with three, two of the four dashes and speed up. So I'm gonna hit the rabbit icon to go a little faster. And we're gonna go. Gotta open the arms for that rabbit icon to take. But we're gonna take a look and see how much of a difference that makes. It makes a pretty big difference. Considering I'm peeling out, it was pretty awesome. So, the response is pretty good, and I'm peeling out in an electric riding mower, which is amazing, and it's a good feeling. Having used a 60 uh, inch cut uh, Gravely mower, this is kind of a lot smoother, a lot, it's a lot less intimidating when you don't hear a big motor going behind you but I'm ready to take off and do a little cutting. So let's go move down to my front yard and see if we can get some cutting going. Yeah, dude. Whoop. I wanna cut this pretty low and we're just gonna go straight on. That's about as low as you can go from the beginning. So we're gonna go up to about two. That's what I was cutting on the uh, other mower that I borrowed from my neighbor. So we're gonna go at two, that's pretty normal. Um, we do have, this can lift up and down. If you wanna hold that up, a lot of professionals I see just lift that up and go. 
So as far as I can tell, this red button controls the blade, and when we lift it up, it's gonna turn on the blade going, and you won't probably be able to hear me. So my plan is to turn that up. We're on standard mode, but I'm as fast as I can go in standard mode, and I'm just gonna cut a whole strip and then come all the way back and we'll discuss what happens. So that was really good. A two in the power of this spin seemed to work perfectly fine. I, I don't even know if I need to go up to two. I may need to go to one with my grass. I mean, it's it's pretty high for what it is, but it's nothing crazy. So the power for this dual spin, the blades are really nice. I do have a tramming issue when I'm pushing at the same. I'm kind of going a little off, so I'm having to adjust that. I'll come back and take a look at that later. But I'm going to go ahead and switch to uh, sport mode and we're going to see what that does, if I can tell a difference. I can tell you this from the mower I was using, the 60 inch gas powered, to this with the seat that springs up and down. This is way more comfortable and it takes the shock absorbing uh, just amazingly. So let's take a look in how it cuts with the sport mode. Honestly, I think it's a little bit more responsive to the turning. It's kind of a little bit more jerky, but other than that, I don't really notice a difference. So we're gonna go back down into control mode. So remember we have standard, sport, and control. I'm gonna try it out on control, see what the difference is there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mow my front grass in a time lapse to uh, see how it performs. So the biggest difference I can tell in control mode is not when you're actually driving forward, I can feel it now that I've done it, is when you're turning left and right. It slows it all the way down and you have way better control. This is a great 
way to do it if you're going to be really close to a tree or riding a fence line or something like that. We're about three months after that first shot of me cutting the front. That worked really well. I wanted to give a more in-depth how long uh, actually using the thing um, is it worth getting. So I have, if I wipe off the dirt, the dust off of this thing, it tells me right here I have 17 hours of use on this. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a whole season essentially of cutting for me at my house. So let me discuss some of the good things about this mower that I like so far after three months of use. Uh, I love that I never have to worry about gas. That's amazing. It's literally, I use it, I go back into the garage, I plug it in, and it's ready to go. The other thing is that I can use the batteries that are in here for my other tools. It's also really fast um, for what it is. It goes about seven to eight miles an hour, so I cut fairly fast uh, in my yard. The cut quality is really good. I mean, when I cut, it, it's perfect. I don't see any uneven cutting or anything. Maintenance is really easy on this as well. Basically, plug in the battery, charge it, unplug it, and uh, that's about it. It's really comfortable as well. The seat does a really good of fitting my body and absorbing the shock as I'm driving. Uh, also, I really like the power meter at my foot down here so I can see how much longer I have to cut. All right, the main thing we're going to wonder about with an electric mower is how quiet it is. And this is it. This is full power when you're driving. But really, it gets louder when you turn on the mower. It's not bad, but it's louder. All right, so obviously I'm pulling a cart with a human behind me, and this thing doesn't even get phased so you can tow really well. I just put a bolt in the back towing spot and attached my cart to it so the cameraman is uh, in the cart behind me. But follow along as I mow a strip so you can see what it's kind of like viewing this thing from a first person perspective. <laughs> Right, here's some of the negative things that I found about this after three months of use. Number one, it says up to two acres of runtime. That's total lie. It does not do two acres. My entire land is two acres and I can do the front and the side, which is probably an acre, uh, acre and a half. Although we're not sure exactly if up to two acres of runtime means six full size batteries. I have four full size 10 amp batteries and two five amp batteries. So I essentially have five amp, uh, five 10 amp batteries in here. That does not give you a two hour runtime. If you did have like just a square with absolutely nothing in it, you could probably do that, but no one has that. You have a house and stuff you need to go slow around, trees, bushes. So you're not getting two acres. Another thing is that when you do run out of battery and you need a charge, you have to wait an hour to charge. Unlike gas mowers, I could just fill it up and keep going. I now have a break in between. And if you're kind of, like me, 
and you're doing it all in one shot, yard work and stuff, you're disgusting. You don't want to sit around for an hour just in your own filth. You want to take a shower, but then you don't want to come out and finish uh, cutting. So that's kind of a negative. It's kind of a bummer. The other thing I'm going to nitpick on is the stickers. They are coming off. It's kind of like bubbling up. It's like a really well-made, high-quality plastic machine, but they've used really low-quality stickers and emblems on the thing that are going to rub off it within the first year of use. The other thing is these foot pads that have like the grip tape on them to hold your feet as you drive. You can see mine's wearing off over here. Again, this is only three months of use. And during cutting, it's got a ton of deck bounce. You'll hear it go bang, 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 bang like that as we cut. Um, and it's metal on metal up here that's bouncing. They really needed like a rubber bushing or something to stop that deck bounce. This is talked about in great detail on the Reddit thread uh, on the forum of Ego. The final thing that I'm thinking about is the firmware updates. It's kind of funny to discuss firmware updates for your mower, but they do exist for this, which is good. It means Ego is still investing in their product. I've had about three or four of them since I bought it in the three months that I've had it. You use your phone and the app to connect Bluetooth to the machine to update. It's sort of simple, but nine out of 10 tries, the update has failed and then finally it'll go through. It's a super annoying thing that I hope they fix in the future, but as of right now, just expect the firmware update to fail several times before it actually goes all the way through. One other feature they have down here is you can speed up and slow down how fast the machine moves. Uh, 10 out of 10 times, you're gonna be in the fastest as you can go. But there is a secret turbo feature. If you hold this with the arms open, you'll notice I'm right up here, travel. That means we can go even faster than the four dots. This is how fast it goes. I took the deck off because I need to sharpen the blades. But this is what it looks like with the deck off. There are two quick connects right here that come off uh, a pin with a cotter pin on either side. 
and then the metal bar fits down into here. And the underside of this looks just like this. And I have really dull blades after cutting, so I need to replace those. But that's what the deck looks like off of the mower. All right, that's my review of this Ego Z6 Zero Turn. It's their first ever Zero Turn in electric. I really like it. I'm happy with my Ego products. I did buy this, they did not provide it to me. So there are a little bit of quirks, but I'm happy with the quirks that we have. Uh, I will totally live with that to never have to deal with gas again. So if this is for you, check them out. They're at Lowe's and Ace. I highly recommend Ace over Lowe's because Ace has a rewards program and this is a big purchase, so you're going to get a lot of rewards back. Uh, Lowe's doesn't have that. So again, if you're in the local Searcy area, check out Homer's Ace. I understand it. I'm the first one in Arkansas to ever have one of these things. So anyways, hope this helps. Leave a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe, and happy cutting.